Greetings and salutations, everyone, and Merry Christmas. To start this Christmas day off right, I figured, hey, let's give you guys an early Christmas gift right at midnight. Before we get into it, though, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. My merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, Simply subscribe, click the like button, and please leave a comment. It really does help, and guys, it definitely matters. And now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with today's Christmas upload, shall we? Today's first subscriber submission. Hey, Jeff, I have not talked about this for quite some time. But first, I live less than a half a mile away from the lady who was killed here in Durango, Colorado. And I've lived in the Four Corners for most of my life. There's a supernatural element to the place. It's cursed. The Ancient Ones built multiple ancient cities all over this area, like Chaco Canyon's massive complex in Mesa Verde. As a kid, my parents bought some property on Ruins Road. It's close to the Aztec ruins. It's another Anasazi complex that these ancient ones just mysteriously disappeared in the past. My parents got two acres east of the ruins and moved us in when I was about 15 years old. It's a beautiful piece of land right next to the river, but the place gives me an uneasy feeling even after all of these years. When we got settled in, I made some friends with most of the neighborhood kids. There were two girls that lived west of me, and I didn't have a problem sneaking out at night to see Laura. She was the same age as me, and we both had a bit of a crush. So, me being the one who would head out at night to sneak into her room, it was no problem for me to walk down Ruins Road at night. After a couple of weeks of this, I had one of the most terrifying experiences in my life. It was about midnight and Laura had to go with her parents in the morning, so I was going to head home so she could get some rest. I started on back trail to the ruins and I heard something moving throughout the cedar trees. I stopped to look around me to try to see what was making the noise. When I stopped, the noise stopped, but every time I would start walking, I would hear something coming up behind me. So I hastily made my way to the road. For some reason, I figured I would get away from whatever was following me once I made it to the road. It was a very dark night, but the moon was out, and when the clouds would clear, the night would lighten up so I could see behind me. But whenever the clouds would cover, it was so dark you couldn't see anything. I kept hearing the noise, and I kept up the pace. The fear was overwhelming, a deep sense of fear. Almost like I was going to die, I started to hear this tapping of whatever was behind me on the asphalt, like nails hitting the road. That's when I thought my heart was going to come out of my chest. I stopped to turn around. I could see it now with no trees to cover it in the open road. It was huge, dark, and terrifying. It was at least seven and a half feet tall. Its eyes were glowing red. The silhouette was hulking, broad shoulders, just massive. It was probably 20 yards away from me, but as I saw it, it might have been closer. I turned to run as hard as I could, but it was right behind me, moving up to me. I ran till my chest was on fire from breathing so hard and my legs were about to give out. I didn't know what I could do to defend myself against such a creature. I just stopped falling on my knees in the middle of the road, crying and shaking uncontrollably. I said out loud, Father in heaven, protect me from this monster. As I kept praying for salvation, a calm came over me, filling my body with a sense of peace. The clouds cleared up and the moonlight was even brighter than before. 
I got up and faced the creature behind me. I said loudly so it could hear me and my prayer. I watched it turn away and head to the cedar trees on the roadside. I was still scared out of my mind, but I felt better about continuing home. I hustled to keep my eye on, the, on my back. I never would walk on that road at night or would ever again. I let Laura know what happened to me. She said that her family had lots of experiences of weird things happening in the ruins. At that point, I had never heard of skinwalkers, but that's what she was telling me it was. I don't believe it was. It was something that could have ended me, but by the grace of God, it didn't. Today's second subscriber, Colorado Dogman Submission. Hey Jeff, I've been a subscriber for your channel for about four or five months and I enjoy the information you share on here. This encounter occurred in Colorado Springs near Peterson Air Force Base many years ago. At the time, we lived in Fountain, Colorado, just south of Fort Carson Army Base. Early one evening, I was driving my daughter to the northern part of Colorado Springs so she could attend her acting and modeling class. While driving on Mark Chaffel Road near the Air Force Base, we came to a cluster of trees and brush and noticed the back of an extremely large animal. My daughter said, Daddy, look at that bear. I told her that it was far too large to be a bear. As we got closer to this animal, we saw how wide it was at its shoulders and its head was bent over like it was eating or trying to hide. The fur was blackish in color with a bit of silver. My daughter and I looked at each other and then looked back at the animal again and it was gone. We had no idea what we saw. The hair on the back of my neck was standing up. Well, that's my encounter. On another note, my cousin, who lives near Eagle, Colorado, stated to me that he had a dogman encounter as well. Today's third Dogman Colorado subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, the area of Bennett where I grew up in was 12 miles south of town. I grew up on a 75-acre ranch with horses, dogs, pigs, cats, and we did have a few cows, but not many. The last bull we had got mutilated back in 1998. I had noticed he was gone in the morning and went out to feed. He was there that night before, but gone in the morning, so I went to the barn to tell my dad that he was gone, and we all went looking for him. I found him down by the creek just lying there, but I noticed that he was missing portions of his face. So I went and got my dad. We went back to where he was, and my dad cut him open only to find that his intestines were gone. There was a laser mark going down from his anus to his testicles. His testicles were gone, his tongue was gone, as were his ear and his eyes. The skin around his nose was also gone. There was no blood or smell either. Anyway, I grew up not even a mile from an abandoned missile silo, and there were several abandoned ruins of prison camps in the area as well. Or that's what I was told they were. However, the property that my dad owned and the properties around the area used to be owned by the Buckley Air Force Base and Lowry Air Force Base as well. We used to find unexploded bombs all over the place from practice drops. I used to ride horses all over that area and actually was riding one day on the neighbor's property. And the next day the military was there in the same spot. I had stopped to rest my horse the day before, blowing up bombs. So my entire childhood there, I was always outside in the field with my horses. If I wasn't riding, I was sleeping in the creek with them. On several nights, I know that I wasn't just sleeping with my horses. There was something else there. I used to see large black dogs in the field that would run with the coyotes. But when I was outside at all, they were up on the ridge watching me. We used to have horses that would get injured on absolutely nothing, but none of them were killed, just injured. Our chickens used to get killed all the time, but we chalked it up to coyotes. Now, however, knowing what I do know and knowing that there are dogmen out there, I am not sure if they were just killed by coyotes. 
Every house I ever lived in has always been haunted or had some sort of paranormal surrounding to it. I'm not afraid of anything thanks to these things that I went through as a kid. The house I grew up in, for the most part, everyone hated to walk on the south side of the house at night except me. The south side is the side that the silos were on. Everyone said it felt like we were being watched and that the hair on the back of our necks would stand up. They hated to walk on the south side of the house if the lights in the barn were left on after dark. They all made me do it. There were times that I would bring a fresh ton of hay onto the property and wake up at around two, maybe four, to flip the floodlights on and see the hay had been thrown all over the place and my bales were broken open. That happened twice a month for six months until I saw a ghost in my house and told him to tell whatever was outside to leave the hay alone. Then it stopped. The way my dad was able to buy the house was the people that had the property before him came home one night to find that their camper and their property had been demolished and part of the foundation to the house that wasn't built yet had been destroyed. They put the property on the market and my dad bought it within a week that it was on the market. My dad said that they just up and left. They took was just their belongings. Dad started to rebuild as soon as the property was in his name. He said that nothing strange happened when he was building the house. Back in the summer of 2003, my parents took my niece and nephew on a cruise and asked me and my husband, my son, if we would watch their house and tend to the horses. So, of course, I jumped at the opportunity to get away from my mother-in-law for a few weeks, and my son was two at the time. My husband had gone up to Blackhawk to gamble on Saturday night, so my son and I were home alone. I had gone out to feed around 8 p.m. and then went back to the house. A couple hours later, I heard my horses, I had six at the time, all running to the top of the pasture where I fed. I thought this was odd, so I turned the floodlights on to see if I could figure out what was going on. All I saw was my horses all looking toward the creek. Their butts were facing the house. I thought, that's odd, really odd for my horses, so I grabbed a shotgun off the china hutch, my truck keys, and moved my truck to where the headlights were facing the field. I didn't see anything at first, so I climbed through the fence and started to walk to the creek. My son was safe in the house, sleeping. When I got about a 100 yards from the fence, my horses surrounded me, not letting me go any further than where I was. I tried to push them away from me, but my retired rodeo mare put her head in my chest, and then one of my other horses put her head in my back, essentially pinning me in place. My retired rodeo mare got down on her knees, and the other horse pushed me onto her. I was facing the creek at this point. I heard a growl and movement in the creek, so I fired a shot. I heard the shot hit something solid, and then another growl. Then my horses took me to the fence. When my husband got home, I told him what had happened. He said that in daylight, we'll go check it out. The next day, I put my son in his kangaroo pouch, and we all went out for a walk. When we got to the creek bed, there's a lone aspen tree there. We saw a tuft of gray and black fur with a purple hue to it. Then, when I looked at the ground, there was what looked like blue droplets that led up the bank and into the field. We followed the trail of blue stuff to the fence that separated our property to the silos. I climbed through the fence and looked for more, but it stopped at our fence. After that, nothing happened until a couple years later. I was on my way back from picking up some horses that I had taken down to Kiowa to get bread. I stopped at the stop sign to give my truck and horses a rest because the road I took was horribly maintained and I really beat the heck out of my truck. While I was stopped and sitting there in my truck, my whole truck and trailer, which is a four horse front load stock trailer, started to move violently back and forth. I looked in the side mirror on the passenger side, I didn't see anything. But when I looked in the driver's side mirror, I saw this thing with the head of a dog standing on two legs, trying to get into my stock trailer to my horses. I slammed my truck into gear and got out of there. The thing was trying to foul me. It jumped the fence into the field and ran after me a little ways, but then redirected and ran into the creek. 
When I got to my friend's house, she asked me what was wrong. I told her what had happened. She didn't believe me until we started to examine the horse trailer and saw that there were claw marks down the side of it and around the gate lock where it, was tried, where it tried to open the gate, but it couldn't. About a year after that happened, my husband was coming home from gambling at around four in the morning. We lived in Hudson at the time. He was getting off the highway and looked down in the ditch and saw two what he said were werewolves walking on two legs through the ditch towards the meat locker. He hauled home and didn't tell me about it for a week. We moved from Hudson in 2007 to our house in Prospect Valley, Colorado. There were times at night that I would hear knocks on the house and see things through the windows of the house. At the time, we didn't have any guns because of our young son. We had knocking on the house a lot. When we heard it, I'd leave my husband in the house with our son and I would take a knife to go check the property. I never did see anything. Fast forward to the last couple of years, my nephew lives in Bennett in Kiowa Creek. He has told me that he sees things walking on two legs in the creek that have the face of a dog. He has been stalked in the creek and even ran off the creek one night when we were down there at around two in the morning, I was with my current boyfriend. I've been divorced for four years now. And a friend. The creek is haunted and has a rich history of ghosts and Native Americans as well. We were walking next to the creek on the trail when we heard something running at us. I saw red eyes. We stopped and we were silent. I looked around and came face to face with the red eyes and a horrible smell. It smelled like wet dog and stagnant pond water. I looked at the eyes for what seemed like forever, and then they vanished. I have no idea what it was and still have no clue. My nephew and my son were being typical boys one night, and instead of using the bathroom, they decided to pee off the front porch. They heard walking on the roof of the house and look up to see red eyes and growling right back at them. Needless to say, they went right back in the house. My nephew has seen something in one of the water pits by the creek feeding on deer carcasses. He refuses to go down to the creek alone. Second email from this subscriber. Jeff, I forgot to tell you about the Buffalo Ranch north of Byers, Colorado. I adopted one of the kids that grew up working on the ranch, and he told me some strange stories about different things that happened to him there. And when I was there with him last summer, we had a weird experience. He told me that at least once a week, if not daily, he would find dead buffalo randomly throughout the property. The way they dispose of them is just to toss the dead in a pile down by the creek, the Baiju Creek. He said that his family had no idea why they died, but they lost a lot of them. He has seen them torn to pieces and then just dead and not bloated. The family doesn't bother to send them to find out what caused the death. They just pile them up and move on. They have several piles of dead buffalo all over the creek bed. He also told me that one day he was walking through the creek bed after it had dried up for the summer, and he heard the buffalo start to stampede, so he turned to see what the problem was. He saw two large black dogs chasing them. Then, when the dogs saw him, they stopped and started to walk casually down the creek bed. Then, when things he thought were dogs got a little ways away from him, they stood up on their hind legs and started creeping down the tree line as if they were going to go after him. Then they disappeared. He said he ran back to the farmhouse and refused to go back down there until I asked him to take me there once. We got down to the creek bed, taking the truck load of sand for my house, when we both at the same time got a feeling that we were being watched. So we stopped and started looking around. We saw a man standing by a pile of dead trees 50 yards away from us. I started to take steps towards the man, and we both saw him clearly. He was wearing a red flannel shirt, blue jean overalls, and he was looking right at us, and we were standing side by side. When I stepped towards him, he vanished into thin air. We got the chills, and I decided to walk through the trees toward the north. He was yelling at me to stop walking and get into the truck because 
when that man is seen, the werewolves are near. I told him, that's okay. I just want to walk. We had no weapons at all. We were grabbing our shovels. I took my phone out and started to take pictures of every few feet. When I heard branches snapped, I took a picture. The hair on the back of my neck was standing on end, and the afternoon out was dead quiet. There were no birds, insects, nothing. You could hear a pin drop a mile away. It was so quiet. We walked about a mile from the truck and tractor, decided to turn around and go back. On our way back, I stopped to rest and talk to nature. All I said was that whatever or whoever is out here, we mean you no harm. And we are just here talk, taking a walk because the day is beautiful and so is the creek. After I said that, we heard walking not far behind us, but we couldn't see anything. It sounded like whatever it was, walking was about a 100 yards east of us. I said out loud, we do not wish to cause you any harm in any way. We are just enjoying the beauty of nature and would like to get to our vehicle safely, so please allow us to do so. We started to whack back to the trucks. I heard a noise not far from me because my adopted kid took off running. When I heard the branches and dead leaves crunch, I stopped and took some pictures all around. Then I walked casually to my truck and said, thank you for allowing us to walk the beautiful land we are going to leave now. Then he got onto the tractor and I got into my truck and we left. Today's fourth Colorado subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, I went to Southern Colorado to pick up some hay with several friends yesterday. The hay is good quality and more affordable than buying it at a feed store where they'll charge you an arm and a leg. The catch is you have to pick it off the field yourself. I can't pick up those heavy hay bales, but this married couple can. Both guys are big boys. It's not a problem for them. However, I can help by driving their truck slowly down in the pasture between the bales of hay that are lined up on each side of the trailer where they can load the bales on. As they load, I can enjoy the beautiful scenery. I've seen elk, deer, coyotes drinking out of the irrigation ditch that runs all around the pastures on different occasions. On the last leg of them loading the hay onto the trailer, I looked over to the next pasture and started watching the rancher's horses grazing when I noticed a bare spot in the pasture. It looked like the ground had been scraped. Then this horrific, god-awful smell hit me. The guys noticed it as well. We were all gagging. They hurried up to load the hay onto the trailer. The rancher met us on the way out so we could pay him. We told him about the smell just in case he didn't know about it. He did know about it, and he proceeded to tell us that last week he had found a deer carcass in the horse pasture I had mentioned above. He said it was all shredded up. He's never seen anything like it. He mentioned that the smell was so bad that he threw up on the spot. His dog refused to go near the deer carcass, which he found was rather odd. He left the remained with the backhoe to take it up and drop it off to the back of his property in the heavy woods for the coyotes. He said the minute he picked up the deer carcass with the backhoe, the coyotes started to howl like crazy. He said that creeped him out because he knew they were watching him. When he dropped the deer carcass off at the edge of the woods, he then heard a very deep howl along with the coyotes. He said that it did not sound like a coyote. He said that he got very nervous and got out of there. I wonder what attacked that deer a week ago that could have let such a terrible smell behind. and We could smell it a week later. I almost forgot to mention this part. Remember the scraped bear spot I noticed in the horse pasture? He told us that he scraped out the dirt where the deer carcass was lying to get rid of the smell there. It sounds like a dog man, but because he didn't see anything, I can't confirm it. That deep howl makes me think that it was. I hope you are doing well. I have not emailed you in a while, and I will send you an email. Uh, I hope your Christmas and holidays were wonderful. Today's fifth subscriber, Colorado Submission. 
Hey Jeff, thank you for everything you do. Most of the paranormal stuff I have dealt with is cattle mutilation on ranches in western Colorado around Montrose area where I grew up. My first encounter when as I was around 10 years old and was stalked in the Black Canyon area of Colorado. I was hiking down to the river to go fishing with my dad. He took a more advanced trail. I think it was a bobcat trail, if I remember correctly, and I was taking chucker trail. Before I get too far, I'm telling you this encounter because it relates to recent stuff. Anyway, 10 minutes into the hike, I felt this horrible dread. Something was telling me to get back to the truck. I tried to ignore it and kept pushing on. I made it about halfway to the river before I physically could not take the feeling I was having. It was at this point I started seeing very large tracks that I couldn't identify. At the time, I assumed them to be mountain lion, but they were very skinny and long with huge claws. They only had three front pads, though. About halfway to the truck, I started seeing them again, but this time they were following my original footprints on the way down. I realized at this point I was in serious trouble and chambered around in my shotgun. When I got to the truck, I quickly unlocked it and jumped in, locking the door behind me. It was at this point I saw it looking at me from the top of a rock. It was solid black, very wide and low to the ground. I thought it was a cat, but it didn't look right. I still don't know what it was, and the very wide low stance still gives me nightmares. This thing had to have been 300 pounds, but the way it was standing on all fours was so strange maybe a foot and a half off the ground. The face looked between a cat and a canine. In other words, it had a dog's snout, but shorter, if that makes sense. Luckily, it disappeared and nothing further happened. Fast forward to last November, my daughters and I were flying my drone looking for animals, and I was looking for whatever this thing I'm about to tell you. I didn't tell my daughters or anyone. I had been seeing what I described as a child running away on all fours a few times extremely low to the ground. My drone took off above the trees when the thing, whatever it is, jumped out of the brush ten feet away from us and ran like the wind. It was incredibly fast. I only saw the back side of it and it just looked like a solid black mass in a strange low to the ground running stance. It was incredibly strange. It was very large, black as night, and ran faster than I had seen anything move. It was like it was pulling itself with its front legs and pushing with its back legs together, not separate like a dog or a cat runs. Since then, I started to fly my drone looking for it, and it has seemed to have been gone till a few weeks ago. I started to smell a very strong odor of pus and wet dog on my front porch and shop area. I've caught it running in the sides of my eye, if that makes sense, two times, but the thing is so fast it's hard to keep up before it disappears. This started happening right after the kids and I went back out into the woods and had a fire and talked for hours one afternoon. Not sure that has anything to do with it or not. I haven't seen it long enough to catch any features on the face, but it was definitely triangular shaped. I'm sorry, this isn't very exciting, but that's really all I have. Oh, we have also woken up twice at around three in the morning to growling outside, but it stops as soon as I get up and turn the lights on. All right, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed your first Christmas gift of the day. I'll have a couple more throughout the day. With that, I want to thank you all for being here. Just this channel is my Christmas gift. Having you guys on my side is my Christmas gift. So thank you. With that, may the great spirit watch out for us all and may he guide us down that path that we call life. And also, God bless everyone. And today is the birth of the Christ child. So Everyone be kind to each other. Remember what today is about. It's not about gifts. It's about love and respect. 
Have a good day. See you in a little bit.